Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with another model video. Today I'm going to be designing a model diorama from scratch, uh, showcasing the drafting to the printing, uh, processing, and painting. We'll be doing the Albanian one man pillbox, which featured all across Albania during the Cold War, which bankrupted the nation through the uh, then uh, government spreading it across the country in fear of invasion. Uh, the quirk of this design is it only allows one man inside, which uh, makes feeding a belt-fed machine gun very difficult and giving it no tactical advantage. Hunting around Google, I found quite a few videos and documentaries on the subjects, a few tourist photos and these schematics attached to the Wikipedia article translated into English with exact dimensions and a reference to a person. This is all transferred into Fusion 360 where the basic shapes were laid out and dimensioned in full scale. The shapes were extruded with a base made in many parts as well as assembled. The goal is to share this on Fingerverse for other people to scale and apply to their projects, dioramas, wargaming or train layouts. Going to the Maker and 3D Printing tab, I meshed up the solid and turned it into an SD file, the individuals plus the whole piece on base, and had a look at it on Mesh Mixer for any obvious issues or faults. The assembly on base was exported in an object file and sent to Sculpt GL. This is where I had a experimentation with 3D sculpting and pinching and manipulation of a mesh file by putting many reference points and stretching or distorting to get an ideal organic shape. The soil and earth, I just left it very blocky when done as a solid and moved it around to the point where it looked like natural soil swallowing up the concrete mass. Little rocks were also added. It took several attempts until it looked pretty good. Bringing up the scale model calculator, I converted one of the axes from the full scale to 35th and redialed it into a mesh mixer to get an ideal shape for one 35th and converted it back to an SDL file. The next bit of software we utilized is Cura for slicing. All the pieces that I intend to print, the base, the top separately to be glued on top in case I want to position figures inside. Scaled a milk crate AK-47 and bottle as extra props on my diorama downloaded from Thingiverse and input it the settings for very thick walls and a fairly decent enough infill to comprehend the processing techniques I'm about to experiment on this model. Uh, the printer used is the Creality Ender 5 Plus. There's going to be a full video and all the setting up my review and uh, thoughts uh, plus pushing it to its limits. It's still in uh, production do wish to show this model off first of course with the sheer size of this build being almost uh, a foot it's a very long print over two days which was a bit uh, nerve-wracking i input very cheap pla filament that had sitting around all the way back from my up mini days which is definitely uh, water soaked and damaged and with higher than normal heat settings uh, popped out quite beautifully and adhered nicely to the glass bed. I admit I thoroughly enjoy this printer. Outputting two types of models, a very large plain surface diorama with basic geometric shapes did leave with some stepping and artifacts all over the place. There was a minimal support so the underside is a little bit undesirable. Overall works out completely perfectly for me at uh, 0.2 mil layers and about 2 mil thick walls. On the other hand, I kind of expected the AK-47 and milk crates to completely fail and to be surprised it was detailed small enough and peeled off the bed ideally to be completely utilized with this model. 
So doing a lot smaller, more finer detail with this generation of uh, 3D printers is far more possible than earlier generations would have comprehended. I do have to repeat when I started the whole 3D printing series, there's nothing like developing something in CAD or sculpting software and once produced holding it in your hands and seeing it visually in the real world from your ideas. The processing started first by using a butane torch and heating the surface very softly to melt the plastic a bit and watch the z-axis lines smooth out to a flatter shinier surface. This only works on large not very detailed surfaces. There's a lot less to sand. Some air bubbles will develop. Uh, distortion or melting or caving in of walls is possible if the print is too thin or you're melting or burning it too much. It can burn as well. Let's off our fumes. Be careful with all of that. Explore with a cheaper, nastier model. Coated everything by hand with Mr. Surfacer 500 to fill in any last uh, Z-axis gaps and uh, gave it a very generous uh, sanding with high grit 80 and 120 grit sandpaper to get as flat surface as possible and polished it up with finer sandpaper assortments followed by airbrushing a few coats of the Mr. Surfacer 500 to identify any finer faults or leftover unacceptable air bubbles or cracks. Used uh, Mr. Dissolved Putty to fill those in with a Q-tip, re-sanded it, applied PVA glue onto the earth sections which I did not do any sort of uh, treatment with sanding to save time sprinkled a bunch of different sand for a earthy complexion and tone and give it all another coat of primer before heading off to the painting stage this may come across as tedious, though the use of product is uh, diminished compared to my other larger 3D prints from way back on the App Mini. The torch does the majority of the work. I'm a little more up to date and cluier about sandpaper, its grits and its effects going to something that's uh, quite aggressive and over the top for the first round and the work on this was uh, not very hard it was only a few hours in applying the mediums and then sanding it after drying another day and then applying it again on the third day so a lot of this not so hard at all and far more speedier for such a large piece going on to painting I did the usual utilizing lacquer hobby paints, uh, Mr. Hobby uh, guy notes, via an airbrush and shading in multiple colors, giving a gradient light look of about three to four on the gray, starting on the concrete surfaces of the bunker first, dark to light, and then being very playful and touching up on the dirt and soil and sand colors. It appeared to be a bit light and I wasn't necessarily a fan with the orange and the sand. It was very, very close to the initial reference picture at the start of the video, but once the flock started laying on with PVA glue and dead grass, the effect was almost spot on. So the foresight was definitely there and was quite effective. The final coat was multiple layers of Gaia Note Premium Matte Clear to deaden it as much as possible from any sort of sheen or gloss being a earth weathered dull object. Due to not masking and all the freehand shading methods applied with the airbrush, weathering was not recommended with washes or pigments popped out well enough, hand painted the AK-47 and airbrushed a yellow milk crate. Uh, they too were PVA glued into place to look like someone sitting there, the rifles resting against the wall, and they're doing God knows what a resistant fighter or the soldier would be doing off the scene. And this pretty much concludes the model. How it turned out, I can't be any more happier. 
pretty glad that uh, after watching a documentary and just uh, being thrilled seeing these tiny bunkers, kind of want to see them for myself. That would be really cool as a small kiosk or shop somewhere in the city you could use as a public toilet or sell cigarettes through. Uh, people doing graffiti art and just all these variations out there and a thousand uh, uses in Albanian society, yet they've never really been used for their intended purpose. I just kind of wanted to uh, showcase and produce a model where being as obscure as it is, a model manufacturer company would not necessarily tackle a subject like that. This was also the perfect excuse to start learning 3D sculpting with an existing uh, mesh file that was created from a solid. So I'm going to be far more playful in my future 3D modeling and printing. For large volume 3D printer, um, you're going to bet that I'm going to take advantage of that and do some very, very big prints if it's pinched off uh, Thingiverse or of my own creation. All of that, thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. Have a look at the description section where I have the link to the Thingiverse where you can download this model immediately to print and produce yourself. I'm putting it out there in the uh, public domain. See you later and thank you for watching.